very basic philosophy explaining about the regulated principles and the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. So in this way, we were supporting our temple and maintaining also the deity worship. So, 1972, Prabhupada had sent one householder couple over to London because what happened, the, the initial people who had gone to London, they'd gone off to India with Prabhupada. Prabhupada was forming his Sankirtan party and he wanted to introduce Krishna consciousness to India. At that time there was no temple, no, nothing really in India at all. So Prabhupada took the devotees who had come to London Prabhupada took them with him to India to preach there and it, it left like one person there in London. He was left in London with a few other young devotees. So in this way somehow the temple was going on uh, with great difficulty. But then gradually the devotees in the USA they learned the art of Sankirtan and book, distri book distribution. And Srila Prabhupada was very enthusiastic about this. He encouraged the devotees, this is very good. You know, initially Prabhupada had told the devotees you should all get jobs. And you get jobs in this way that we will support our temples and support our society. But some of the devotees, when they got jobs, like they got a job in a cigarette factory. So Prabhupada said, no, 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 you can't do this. Working in a cigarette factory, it's not appropriate. So some, sometimes people have these kind of jobs. It's, it's not very good for our Krishna consciousness. So then somehow they got the idea, the devotees got the idea, let's do Sankirtan. And they were going out chanting, and one devotee started to collect donations. And then they realized, oh, this is very good, people give donations. And so they did it, they started to do it more and more. And they would give out literature also. So Prabhupada, when he heard about that, he encouraged, he said, oh yeah, this is very good. You can do this. And so it happened like that. that around the, the world, wherever we had centers, we would do book distribution. When I joined the movement, they told me, you can give out back to Godhead, and if people give a donation, then take it. But if they don't have any money, it's all right, just give them the book anyway. Just give it to them. But then, what happened was, the devotees were not able to pay the BBT for the books. <laughs> there was not enough money for paying for the books. And so Prabhupada was worried that how will we keep printing books? If you don't pay for the books, how will we ever be able to continue printing? So this is very bad. Actually, at that time we didn't have many books, as I said. We had the, the Krishna book, volume one had come out. Then after some more time, the second volume came. And the Bhagavad Gita, we didn't have our own Bhagavad Gita. There was only an abridged version of the Bhagavad Gita, which had been published by the Macmillan Publishing Company. It was a, a small paperback version with no Sanskrit and only very abridged purports. So Prabhupada didn't like that at all. He wanted his, all the purports and he wanted the Sanskrit. So later on, after some time, Macmillan did agree because it booked so well. So Macmillan, they did publish the big Bhagavad Gita with all the purports and with the Sanskrit and everything. And then they printed it, but then after that, they, did, they only printed it one time. They didn't print it again. So then we took over the printing and it became published by the BBT although initially it had been published by Macmillan. So that took several years. It was like 1974 
or 75 before we got the complete Bhagavad Gita. And Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, there was uh, Prabhupada had gone to America with the first canto Bhagavatam in three volumes, and he printed that in New Delhi himself. So it was a, an Indian publication. If you saw the Indian publications in those days, they were not very good quality. You know, and everything was done by typesetting, manually, you had to check everything, there was no computers or anything. So it, it took a long time, there was a lot of work, and there was a lot of mistakes, it needed a lot of correction. Anyway, Prabhupada got it all printed, and he took the first, the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which was in three volumes, he took that with him to America. So when I joined the movement, that was the Bhagavatam, that was what we had. The, the one which was printed in India. There was no other Bhagavatam. Just the first three volumes, the first, the very first canto only. But then Prabhupada said, no, we have to print more. And they would print the second canto and we would do it chapter by chapter. Then one chapter came out, they, that is one book. Then another Another chapter came out, that was another book. And, and in this way there were several volumes of the second canto. However, uh, Prabhupada, of course, said it would be better to put everything together and have one book. So, and that took some time, it was quite a few years to get everything organized. And as Prabhupada was writing the Bhagavatam, then more would come out. And so, you know, the second canto, that was like 1972, 73, because of, in between that, Prabhupada had written the Krishna book, and then teachings of Lord Chaitanya had been written, and the Nectar of Devotion had been written. Ishopanishad was published, that was taken from Prabhupada's writings when he was still in India, before he went to America, he had written the purports to the Ishopanishad and, and he published that also himself at Bank to God, in a Bank to Godhead publication. But when he went to America, then he told the devotees to find that, to get that, and to print it as a book. So the Ishopanishad was published as one book. So like that you can see we have very, very few books. The nectar of devotion had been actually printed by the devotees because initially Prabhupada wanted the devotees to print the books. And so we organized the devotees in USA. So, uh, <laughs> Prabhupada uh, got these, these different books printed. Nectar of Devotion was printed by the devotees. They had their own printing press and they did everything themselves. All the layout and the graphics and everything, without computers, it was all done with the very old technology. And in this way they printed the nectar of devotion. So you could understand the printing was not very good. But anyway, somehow they got it done. And gradually, you know, Prabhupada was writing still, but the books were not coming out. Anyway, Back to Godhead was being published, but as I said, it, was, it wasn't like it is today. It's not, today it's the in-house publication. Whereas in the past, it was more for general public, for new people, and for people who knew nothing about our movement, that they could read Back to Godhead and find out, understand about our society. So we have these books shipped from Japan, 
the fact that God had, had been printed in Japan, Prabhupada went to Japan personally and he negotiated with the printers there and they printed the back to Godhead and then they would ship them from Japan, they were shipped to America and there were also some were shipped to the UK. So we had the back to Godhead magazines there in the UK and we had the volume one Krishna book and like that we were distributing these books to support our movement. There was no big volume of books for Bhagavatam, there was one set only from in, you know, which somehow somebody had got from Prabhupada, with what Prabhupada had brought with him to America, somebody who came from America to London brought one set of Bhagavatam there, and that was the only copy we had. So like that, there were very less, less books, but we were supporting our movement by book distribution. So how to do it? So the Holy came from America and he told us how they do it in the USA and he said we get a vehicle and we go and travel around and go and visit everywhere. We go around. Don't just stay in the temple and wait for people to come to the temple. You have to go out and go out to the people. And if you go out in the same town every day, on the same streets, then you meet the same people every day. So it's better to go around and go out and go and visit all the different places. Because that is the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nagar Adi Gram, right? Priti Viti Achi Yot Nogar Adi Gram. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the chanting of the holy name would be heard in every town and every village. So he said, devotees have to go out there and visit these places and give the holy name. And indeed Bhaktivinoda Thakur was doing that. He was going village to village. He had established the Namhata and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. He was also preaching in that way, going around all over India. So Srila Prabhupada encouraged the devotees Yes, go and travel and go and distribute books. So a devotee came from USA to London and he told us, you have to organize a Sankirtan party and let them go out and go and visit places. Because if they stay in the temple, they get stuck in and they get lost in the routine in the temple. And then, you know, they spend a lot of time in the temple and they go out for Harinam and just go out for an hour or two. But if they're traveling, if they go away from the temple, they can go out the whole day and distribute books, right? They spend the whole day so they can distribute many more books. So it was decided we would organize the first traveling Sankirtan party in the UK. And so Jananda Maharaj, at that time he was Jananda Das Brahmachari, he was chosen to be one of the members of that first traveling Sankirtan party. And also uh, His Grace Prabha Vishnu Prabhu, he was also on that party. I was chosen to stay back because we had to keep the, the Sankirtan party going in London. Every day in London we would go out on Harinam and do Sankirtan there. There were many ladies also joining the movement and they would come with us on Sankirtan also. It's not just only men doing Sankirtan. Ladies would also go out on Sankirtan and do Harinam and distribute books. So we were having, the, the ladies, we didn't organize traveling for them. We thought it would be a bit difficult to have the ladies but we will take, let some men go first. So Jananda Maharaj, he went on the first traveling Sankirtan party with Prabhu Vishnu Prabhu and several other devotees. And they got in a van and they went out and they went different places and they did, started to do very well. They would distribute many books and they would meet nice people and they would also collect some funds which helped to support the temple. Because as I said, our temple really didn't have any real income to support the temple. 
So I remember Jananda Maharaj, that how he was very enthusiastic. Always, you know, we see his enthusiasm even today for Sankirtan. And over the years, he's kept up that enthusiasm. And that's 50 years now. So for 50 years, he's maintained the same enthusiasm for Sankirtan and book distribution. Sometimes he will go to Australia and one of the devotees, one Malaysian devotee who was studying there in Australia, uh, a devotee called, many of you know, Sanchabrat from Taipei. And so he was studying there in Australia and he would tell me how whenever Jananda Maharaj would come there, he would get everyone to go for Harinam Sankirtan. And the devotees there in Melbourne, they'd be so happy when he would come because he would organize Sankirtan party and get everyone out on the streets to do chanting and book distribution. So he's kept up this enthusiasm through 50 years of Krishna consciousness. He has very staunch faith in the Sankirtan movement. And you can see it. When he was selecting his sannyas guru, he selected Lokanath Das Goswami as his sannyas guru. Because Lokanath Goswami, Lokanath Swami, Lokanath Swami Maharaj, he's a, a very wonderful kirtanier, and he's also very fond of Sankirtan. And actually, it's, it's Lokanath Swami who organized the, Hari, the Holy Name Week which is one week in the year, the Holy Name Week, when we're meant to put more energy into Sankirtan and chanting the Holy Name. So Jananda Maharaj is very active in that program also, promoting the Holy Name. So he's kept up this enthusiasm in the most remarkable way. Over the years, he's had many responsibilities. He was here in Malaysia for a number of years. He organized the VBT because for many years the devotees here would distribute a lot of books, distributed many, many books. So he would be met involved making sure there's always a good supply of books. And you need, of course, not only English books here, you have also Tamil speaking people and you have some Chinese and you have some Telugu and different languages of meaning. And so he would get all the different languages, try to organize enough books to keep everybody happy. And so he was organizing the BBT here. And then sometimes, for some time, he was in New Zealand. He was the temple president in Auckland, in New Zealand. And he was there for some time when the construction of the temple was going on. And he spent also time visiting in Melbourne and Sydney, different temples in Australia. So he's well known, very popular with the devotees. At the same time, he also continues to go back to the UK where his roots are. And he will go back to the UK and see how the preaching is going on there. And in the recent times, he's been focusing his energy into France because the French Yatra had declined a lot. Although at one point it was doing very nicely, it went through a decline. And so in the, a few years ago, he started going there regularly and working there and encouraging the devotees. Although he's an English speaking man and he told me, he said, I hate, I can't learn any other language. He only, you know, English people have that problem that they think everybody should speak English. <laughs> this is a problem which English people have. So he told me personally, he said, I, I, because I said, how's your French? He said, <laughs> no way. <laughs> he said, I know, didn't know any French. But still, he's there and preaching. And, and Prabhupada explained, he said, you know, just like if there's a fire in the building, 
If there's a fire in the building, the next door neighbors, they may not speak the same language. But if there's a fire in the building, somehow you want to notify them, you want to alert them, and somehow you get the message across. So like that, we may go to some kind, we go to these countries at times, and we don't know the language. But still, because the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so important, we will put everything into it, we'll make every effort to try to communicate this message to them. So Chandan Dvaraj, you can see he's working there in France, and he's, it is, it's booming, it's starting to really grow. New Mayapur is going on, and more and more visitors are coming there, and devout people are joining, and a lot of books are being distributed. By the presence of Jananda Maharaj, they have now, they just recently reprinted the French edition of Srimad Bhagavatam. He told me, he was just here a few days ago, so I had a few words with him, and he told me, he said, uh, they had not printed it since 1985. So they were completely out of the French Bhagavatam, but he managed to push it, and, and, you know, with a lot of difficulty, a lot of pressure, uh, he had a lot of, it's not easy uh, arranging these things, but somehow he managed it, and they got the Bhagavatam printed, and he told me Christmas math and the lawn, they distributed 120 sets of French Bhagavatam. So that was very good, wonderful achievement for the French Yatra, and the, it, it's going on very nicely. Young men, young people are joining, and regular Sankirtan is going on, and books are being distributed, and the temples are beginning to get out of debt, and the temples are, you know, they're establishing the deity worship, keeping the deity worship standards up. So it's difficult, you know, you get the, the like the New Mayapur, which is a property which they own in France, it's a big land, it's an old building. It used to be a chateau, Chateau means like castle, you see, and uh, you know when you have these old buildings, they take a lot to maintain. <laughs> and I know also in London, Bhaktivedanta Manor, they have a lot of maintenance because it's an old building and you cannot just redesign the whole place. There's so many rules and laws, what you can do and what you can't do. And in Europe, you have to follow the law. You know, in India, it's a different thing. <laughs> you, you, you can argue, you can go to court, you can do so many things. You know, in India, people, <laughs> they don't care about laws. And, but in, the, in Europe, in France, in England, in Switzerland, these places, they're so strict. You have to follow the system they've got. You have to follow their rules, their regulations. Just like at Bhaktivedanta Manor, it's an old house and they have these stainless, they have these old gutterings, you know. Bhaktivedanta Manor, there's no PVC because when that place was built, nothing was in PVC. So it's all like galvanized steel. So they have to get, somehow they have to get the same kind of material to put the same gutterings in. So it's very expensive, very difficult. And similarly also in Umayyapur, they have different thing, fire regulations, and you have to arrange this, you have to do that. So many problems, but you have to, you have to work with the authorities. So Jamananda Maharaj's presence there is very important and it's helped a lot that the devotees have become enthusiastic and more people joining and more and more people also coming to visit there and also the temple is beginning to become nicely established. So you can see uh, that his presence is 
kind of wonderful effect there. And of course, now he came, he came from France. He came through Malaysia just for a day. He's gone off to Sydney. He's having his Vyasa Puja there today. And he has a, a number of disciples, a number of people who are uh, very devoted to him there. And that's why he's gone there for his Vyasa Puja. And later on, and probably in April, we'll be coming back here to see all of you. So we're very grateful to him for his wonderful efforts and his dedication to Srila Prabhupada and the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Hare. His Holiness Jananda Das Goswami Maharaj Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki His Holiness Srila Maharaj Ki Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your wonderful um, talk on Guru Maharaj. So now, without further ado, I would like to invite Guru Maharaj's disciple, 